Nobody move, nobody get hurt, they said. What's happening, friends? Welcome back to the channel, Football Therapy. With me, your host, Jan. Ah, yeah. In the Stamford Bridge studio. Here on Fulham Broadway. All the ghost of people past silhouettes walking past. Sounds morbid. Anyway, welcome back to Chelsea News. Transfer edition. Lots popping off. So much popping off. Nizar Kinsella writing an article about how Atletico Madrid have offered Chelsea players. Ciao, Felix. Speaking about him recently, top tier, high profile, exciting, possibly concerning player, as well as Mateus Kuna, who is this um, striker forward that doesn't really score. We'll talk about, we'll read the article and talk about their stats. I'm just going to just tell you just a bit of context of what they do, what the vibe is. Is it, when players are offered to another club, is it red flags? It could be. An update on uh, Nkuku and. Cristiano Ronaldo and Chelsea reportedly front runners to sign Rafael Leal. Lots of attackers being linked. Surely things will change. There's also an article that I'm not going to read today, but it's a good article by Simon Johnson on The Athletic about how Chelsea could turn, look within, to their own young strikers. You know, Mother Sill we saw play against Aston Villa. He looked quite good. Anyway, settle in, get comfortable, subscribe if you want to, uh, drop a like. Just a little millisecond and it helps out the channel. All you just got to do is go, done, mate, like the video or tap it. A lot of you watch it on your phones, just tap like. Uh, and you're welcome to join the uh, Football Therapy Membership Club. All you got to do is click join. If you've got one ninety nine a month to spare, you can support the channel and get a cool badge and emojis and um, be gangster like me. Let's get into it. All right then, where to start? Where to start? Let's have a little update first from Fab Romano, like we did yesterday. Let's read this really quickly. From Court Offside, of course, he creates content for Court Offside. This is posted by Mark Bruss. Chelsea look to be closing in on the transfer of Leipzig and Cuckoo, of course, according to Fabrizio Romano. We know that the France international has been a world-class performer in the Bundesliga in recent times, and it seems the deal is, quote, almost ready for him to move to Stamford Bridge in the summer. Chelsea fans would feel like the signing of Nkuku, would feel they could do with Nkuku earlier. Well, yeah, because we don't score goals and now we've got a uh, Bruja who's injured. Um, and, but of course, Romano has confirmed, and we spoke about this yesterday, that we will be buying a striker in January. Still, it's not clear if Chelsea will be able to bring the, uh, Nkuku forward. Yeah, I don't think we can. Oh, I said this yesterday. I think Nkuku will want to complete the season with Leipzig. I think we will look elsewhere. But stranger things have happened. Maybe there's a way we can convince them. And, you know, that'll be great. That'll be great. Romano did not name specific names. We we're going to get into that in a minute in terms of January striker. And suggested it might take a bit more time when we have a clear idea of the names um, that are coming up. Of course, we've got to get through Christmas and stuff first before the transfer window opens. But you don't want to mess about, you know? It's only a month, the January transfer window, obviously. And you don't have ages to, like, mess around and everyone's going to be freaking out getting the season back to, you know, started again and lots of weird stuff and the holidays. And, you know, just it's not a good time to, to, to work slowly. So if you can get your ideas in order in December, of course that will be preferable. He said this, Romano, as I wrote in yesterday's briefing, Chelsea will now set up their search for a new striker in January. The Blues wanted one anyway, and the Brogia injury makes their plans even clearer, Romano said. I don't think he slaps his hand. I'm just doing that for theatrical effect. Chelsea's deal for Nkuku is almost ready, but it's this summer. So let's see what happens in January. It will take some time to work out their options. Fortunately, he also said this, and I know you had the there's Ronaldo fanboys out there and you know I'm not one of them but I respect you I can confirm again Chelsea are not in the race to sign Cristiano Ronaldo there are no no negotiations ongoing even though Todd Bowley was interested in the summer before Tuchel blocked the deal reportedly also Graham Potter is not interested in the big man and uh, he's training with Real Madrid at the moment isn't he not, to, not that he's going to play for Real Madrid but He's out of their training camp, training over there in Real Madrid gear. Let's move on. All right, so we are going to talk about the, <coughs> excuse me, forwards offered by Atletico Madrid and this article written by Naz Kinsella, which I'm looking forward to reading with you guys. But first, 
Give Me Sport um, is reporting on Rafa Liao and how Chelsea are frontrunners to sign the £86 million star uh, to, to cut sign for Stanford, sign for Stanford Bridge, to sign for Chelsea and play at Stanford Bridge. Let's read. Chelsea are hopeful of luring Rafa Liao to Stanford Bridge as they have emerged as the front runners. If Milan are willing to sanction his departure, according to transfer expert Dean Jones, having been appointed as the Blues head coach in September, Graham Potter would be handed an opportunity to freshen up his squad in the January transfer window. So, step forward, Rafael Liao, incredibly exciting, dynamic, tricky, tall, strong, fast winger that we've spoken about many a time here on the channel. Really, really exciting. A bit of a wild card in terms of options on the pitch, but, but, poor passing, poor pressing, which for the Premier League, big red flags. But hey, we might put that down to the current system and instruction he's playing with in terms of risk-taking, you, you know, therefore poor passing, in terms of you don't have to waste your energy on pressing because we need you to, have, you know, do your thing going forward. That could, like, nuke his pressing numbers. So, you know, let's not judge just yet. Chelsea appear to have received a boost in their pursuit of Liao, according to Sky Sports Germany. Okay, so Sky Sports Germany reporting on a Portuguese player playing in Italy about a transfer to England. <laughs> well, that's, that's where, surely that's where you'd go for this, uh, for this kind of insight. Via football transfers, he's unwilling to pen a contract extension with AC Milan after they have failed to meet his demands. And also, young Reese James probably sliding into his DMs like he did Wesley Fofana, saying, Come play with me at Chelsea. One could hope and assume. The reports suggest the winger is seeking a deal worth more than £6 million per year. And the impasse has put the Blues alongside Real Madrid and Man City on red alert. Oh, go away, Man City. Chill out. Go away. You don't need anything. Excuse me. Milan are desperate to tie down Liao to fresh terms, and probably to not just try and keep him, but to sell him for a lot, lot more. And uh, as he's set to enter the final 18 months of his contra contract agreement, which is worth £28,000 a week at the uh, turn of the year. 28 k a week for Liao. I mean, we all dream of that money, of course. But for context, Reese James is on like nearly 10 times that amount. And, like, attacking players generally get more money because, you know, it's the sexier side of the pitch. It's the goal-scoring side of the pitch. That's where the moolah is. Goals win games. Goals cost money, baby girl. So, yeah, ten, ten times less, nearly, than Reese James. About the same age as well. And he's a defender. Yeah. Kelce Mercato, Kelce Mercato, have revealed that the City Ad Giants are willing to sell the 23-year-old for £86 million. Pounds. If he's not to put pen to paper by the time the winter transfer window opens for the next month. Journalist Simon Phillips, hey, we know him, has previously told Give Me Sport that Liao has been turned, his head has been turned by Chelsea, and the interest as a result has been to her, has him holding off his commitment to me then. Ooh! <laughs> Hold on. 86 million pounds for someone with 18 months on their deal, left on their deal. From AC Man, didn't you? I mean. I know for like high profile players in the world's game at the moment, people are going 130 million and stuff like that because everyone's just getting terribly excited with ridiculous transfer fees. But I guess like in isolation, 86 million for Liao. I don't know. I don't even know anymore. Like comment down below. Let me know what you think about these transfer fees. Like being realistic in terms of the current climate, you know, like, uh, uh. what has Dean Jones said about Liao? Well, let's, let's, let's hear him. Jones understands, Mrs. Jones, that Liao's recent social media activity has led to further optimism. <laughs> oh, here we go. <laughs> further optimism, optimism that Portugal International will join Chelsea. The journalist believes the West Londoners are in pole position to strike a deal should a move for away from the San Siro be on the cards. Jones told Give Me Sport this quote: "Chelsea have a great interest in Liao." Um, and there is some hope over landing him, especially after he briefly oh, he briefly followed them on social media the other day. All oh, right, I thought this was going to be the Reese James happy birthday thing, but yeah, he did follow Chelsea on like different social medias, then unfollowed them very quickly. <laughs> you know, little things like that. Uh, but Milan are so desperate not to lose him right now because replacing him will be hard. And sure, they're in the race for the Scudetto, right? So yeah, 
and they're in the Champions League. Chelsea are front runners, and this, if it opens up, we will see how it goes over the next couple of weeks. All right, this, and then it talks about how you performed at the World Cup, which was like, you know, okay, meh, but you know, probably not to his best. Sorry, I've got a bit of a cold, therefore a little bit nasally. Let me know what you think about Rafa Liao, man. I mean, none. Do you know what I mean? Like high profile, exciting players. We're about to talk about Felix on this next article as well. It is exciting. It would bring a dopamine hit to one's brain, a fresh excitement, a new hope. But the truth is, until we really fix the team and the identity and the philosophy long term, you know, you could bring Lionel Messi, Erling Haaland, whatever, whoever else you want, Benzema up front, we wouldn't score any goals. But, you know, talent's talent. Let's jump into this article on the by the uh, by the Evening Standard on the Evening Standard by Nizar Kinsella, and um, apparently we've been offered some Atletico Madrid players. So let's find out, shall we? Chelsea have been offered the chance to sign Atletico Madrid duo. Now I don't think we'd sign both. I think this is like they're both available and they've been offered. Jao Felix and Mateus Kuna as they weigh up whether to bring in a new forward in January. The Blues could look to sign a new striker after losing Armando Bruya to a serious knee injury. They are interested in Borussia Dortmund striker Yusuf Makoko as well. Of course, we've covered that quite extensively here. While Barcelona forward Memphis Depay is also an option. I just wouldn't, wouldn't feel that exciting and sexy getting to Pi now, would it? I, you know, he's a good player, but and I think he'd probably cost next to nothing in terms of Barcelona. They want to, you know, get their wages off the books, etc., etc. I just don't know. Um, so Bria has been ruled out for the rest of the season. He's done his ACL. Chelsea will explore both short and long-term options in January with just Pierre Emerick, Aubameyang, and Kai Havertz available to lead the line. Of course. Aubameyang's been pretty poor. He's 33 and he's a good finisher, but he's just not looking good recently. Kai Havertz is a, he's almost a bit, we've said this a couple of times recently, he's almost a bit of a Jao Felix in terms of a really cultured, exciting, talented player that does, doesn't really find a place in the team and hasn't got the elite output. Certainly recently, <laughs> excuse me. It's not team. They have agreed a 52.7 million pound deal to sign in Cuckoo next summer. That's pretty good, right? 52 million for Christopher and Cuckoo with his stats over the last two years and his age is a sensational deal. We, we, I thought this was a really good deal for Werner as well because Werner was explosive in terms of his goal scoring for Leipzig and we got him for like 47.5 million, which was his release clause at the time, which is what? It's like five million pounds cheaper than in Cuckoo when with inflation, that's about right. Both were scoring loads of goals. Not that, you know, Werner was a complete disaster. He obviously had output issues but um and offside issues but that's this that seems pretty reasonable in both times doesn't it especially when we we're just talking about 18 months left on his contract liao for 87 million or whatever he's just signed a new deal in cuckoo and it's like 35 million pounds cheaper we got a good thing going with her uh, <laughs> but then it's a release clause so it's not even like our relationship with leipzig I don't know, maybe just Bundesliga players are much cheaper than City Air players. It's very strange. Again, feel free to comment on this as we go. So it complicates options for next month because we know we're getting in Cuckoo. And Chelsea were offered the, si the chance to sign Felix for £86 million before they lost Breuer's injury. So that's like the same amount as, um, as Liao. Of course, Felix is a really high-profile player. He cost €120 million. Euros. So he cost a lot when he was a, t and he was a teenager, bro. So... And he's 23 now, so the 23-year-old impressed of the World Cup has fallen out of favour with Atletico Madrid manager Diego Simeone, probably because he doesn't like playing horribly defensive football as an attacker, one would assume. And the Spanish club could be open for letting him leave on loan. So this could be an attractive option for Chelsea until Nkuku arrives at the end of the season. And who knows, if Felix explodes and is exciting and we get the top four and we win the Champions League, although he might be cup-tied. Whatever, you know, then you could say, we'll just sign him on a permi and he can play with him, Cuckoo. Any temporary deal for Felix would require a significant loan fee and an option to buy him the next summer. There you go. Wolves and Leeds are, cons are concerned Chelsea could hijack their approach for Atletico Madrid uh, uh, forward Kuna. Okay, so that's more his level. Wolves and Leeds, who is start uh, stalling on the, the, on, the, on the interest after be told he, told he can move in January. I can't speak English. Look, man. Mateus Kuna, I've looked at his stats. Like, Jao Felix, we all know Jao Felix. We don't have to talk about a scouting report. But 
Kuna is in the 12th percentile of the goals. 12th. The bottom 12% of all forwards. I know he can play a little bit deeper. And yes, he's playing for Diego Simeone. So we have to take that into context. And yes, he's young. And yes, he makes assists and is a bit more creative. But is he the answer? That he's been linked to Leeds and Wolves, who will be like in relegation battles. So, you know, are Chelsea going to go in? And and again, again, it's worth it's worth noticing. You know, he's he's not coming in to replace our first striker. He's coming in to replace Brewer. But by the way, many of you... Probably rightly would be like Brody gets needs a chance to be the first team striker because he looks like he's built for it, you know. He's got a touch of the Diego Costas despite only scoring one goal this season. But again, let's not just put this down on the players. This is like a, a, a yeah, holistic thing that we need to grow together. So it's very, very difficult to say uh, that that with uh, with that. So Chelsea have explored a deal for Depay in the summer. Of course, we covered that in the summer transfer window. We were looking to sign Depay. That's before we got a Bamiyang, and we could reignite their interest after his positive displays for the Netherlands at the World Cup. Depay has six months left on his Barcelona contract and is available in January. Manchester United, who are also in the market for a striker in January, um, following the departure of Ronaldo, could be ready to rival for Felix. Felix is represented by super agent George Mendes, who is now close to the new Chelsea co-owner Todd Bowley and has negotiated with Manchester United in the past. Mendes offered Ronaldo to Chelsea in the summer. We said no. So Chelsea are among a host of Premier League clubs trying to sign the 18-year-old Germany striker Yusufa Mukoko on a free transfer from Dortmund. But Dortmund are hoping to fend off interest and tie him down to a new contract. Well, he'll be a free transfer in the summer, but maybe if someone offers them money for January, say, look, you're going to lose this kid for free, take 20 million pounds? Like, surely their hands would be forced for such a sum for a teenager with six months left on his deal. But could you rely on him to just come in and score? Maybe. Maybe you could. Maybe you could. What do you think, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls? It's a tricky one, isn't it? It is tricky. There's certainly options out there, and because there's a whole host of options out there, one would have to assume that something's going to get done in January. Like Fabrizio Romano says, Chelsea will sign a striker. Go in, and even if it's on loan, we'll six-month Chow Felix loan with an option to buy before Nkuku arrives in the, I, 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 in the summer. I really don't think we could accelerate the Nkuku deal forward to next month, but there is seemingly a lot of options. Memphis to buy... I know... in. <laughs> we sign Aubameyang instead of him, but it almost does give you a touch of the Aubameyang vibes. It doesn't feel like it's the answer. He has, you know, he speaks English. He's played in the Prem before and he's clearly a good player, but he's also a high profile player that would want a longer contract. That would want a lot of money. And does he fit the idea of what we want to do going forwards? I'm not so sure. I think we'd say Kuna is, is probably, it just doesn't look like the right kind of profile. I mean, I, what do I know? What do I know? I'm just a content creator. I'm going to put it out to you guys, so make sure you comment down below. Uh, thanks for liking the video. Subscribe if you want to, if you want to join the fun. And if you really want to join the fun, click join and become a Football Therapy Goat Gang certified member. All right. Take it easy. Enjoy the football. Peace.